What is going on guys? Welcome to your 22nd chemistry tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about half-lives and I may even give you guys a nice cool little story if we have time but if not then I'll have to do it in the next tutorial. So basically you remember when I was talking to you guys about nuclear reactions and most of the time it has to deal with a nucleus splitting apart or decaying as we like to call it and this is not the case with fusion and I'll talk about fusion later on it's actually when things come together but most of the time it has to deal with the nucleus of atom splitting apart or decaying so since this is important whenever we're talking about radiation and all that good stuff chemists needed a way to figure out how long it takes a certain isotope to decay however they started looking at these individual isotopes and they saw that for some it was one second for some it could have been a billion years so whenever we're looking at individual isotopes it's really hard to determine how long it takes because basically whenever you're I'll give you guys an example that it may be easier to picture whenever you're trying to determine I don't know let's say how many people watched American Idol last night you don't ask one person you don't ask three people you need to ask at least 10,000 people because the bigger the sample size the bigger or better picture you're gonna have of the overall population so what chemists do is instead of looking at these individual isotopes they pretty much look at all of the isotopes in a particular sample and they get the average time so one last time what they do is they basically get a sample of our particular isotope let's say it's uranium or something now they determine how long it takes half of that sample that uranium to decay and they call this the isotopes half-life now they give it the symbol T one half because in chemistry you need to give everything uh, what's it called symbols so the symbol for this is T one half so if you go ahead and look at a graph you might be thinking okay I understand how something can decay it might look like a linear graph but this is actually not the case whenever we're talking about radioactive decay radioactive material actually decays in exponential fashion so if we look you may be thinking okay so after one half-life maybe fifty percent of the isotope remains makes sense now after two none of it should remain right well that isn't the case because whenever you have a sample of something like we'll just stick with uranium after one of the half-lives fifty percent remains now after another half-life twenty five percent remains and after another half-life twelve point five so is isn't fifty percent of the original it's always fifty percent of whatever it was before so this is useful whenever we're talking about radioactive dating and stuff like that later on but uh... just remember that that it isn't in linear form it's actually in exponential form so theoretically there's always a little bit of the sample still remains because if you took something and split it in half and half and half and half you're never gonna end up with nothing you're just gonna end up with half of whatever it was before so you're saying okay Bucky I understand that kinda weird but it makes sense now that you say that but why on earth would we ever need to know the half-life of anything why is that even important sure you can go ahead and throw it in a graph but it seems kinda useless well Knowing the half-life of something is important because it determines when the sample is safe to handle. Now since all of these isotopes and all of this nuclear material we're talking about emits radiation, or at least the ones we're going to be talking about, you don't want to be around it until they're done decaying and they pretty much have become stable. Because if you're around some uranium and it has a really fast half-life and it's going to be giving off radiation all the time then that stuff can hurt your body and it's really harmful and toxic to be around however if we say okay we figured out the half-life of uranium and it is now become stable enough time has passed where everything is pretty much done decaying and it's now a stable element that's not going to give off any more radiation and that's when we can say okay we can now handle this and not worry about crap getting injected in our body like gamma and beta radiation and all that crap so anyways that is the basics be between half-lives and uh... you know the decay and all these fancy charts so in the next tutorial we're going to be talking about nuclear fission and eventually nuclear fusion which could be the energy of tomorrow so anyways thank you guys for watching and i'll tell my story in the next tutorial so i'll see you then